Welcome to the second presentation in Capital Budgeting, where we're going to discuss net present value, internal rate of return, and profitability index. The net present value is the current dollar value of all of the inflows and outflows of cash for the entirety of the project. From time zero, when we make usually our net outflow of cash for the investment and uh, going on into the end of the project. So the criterion has to be that the present value of the inflows has to be greater than the outflows. Since the net present value, of course, is the sum of all of it, that means the net present value should be greater than zero. Now we have the present value calculation, which is simply uh, the discounted rate on the cash flow. We would be doing this for each cash flow and adding them together, including the initial cash flow, which is no, the cash outflow, and then we would calculate the net present value. The good news is that your calculator can easily make these calculations. All you need to do is enter the cash flows, enter the discount rate, and the calculator gives you your answer. So if we were to do this with the numbers we already had, we have cash flows of 100,000 out, and the remaining cash flows for the five years coming in would result at a discount rate of giving us a net present value of 5,936. I'd like to point out that means then that the cash inflows from years one to five here must be adding up to 5,936 more than the cash outflow in time zero of 100,000. So here we would accept the project, naturally. The internal rate of return is defined as a discount rate for which net present value is zero. Now that doesn't really help us in terms of understanding it intuitively. And fortunately, there is a very intuitive definition for the internal rate of return. It is simply the return on the investment. So for example, if you invested $100 today and received $114 in a year, your return on the investment would be 14%. I invite you to also calculate the fact that the same 14% is also the discount rate for which net present value is equal to zero. So the decision is pretty straightforward. If your internal rate of return is greater than your discount rate or your required rate, or your cost of capital, which we're going to talk about in some other sections, you would accept the project. Now, the internal rate of return becomes a little bit more difficult when you have more than one uh, cash flow because the solution is iterative. There's no closed form uh, equation for it. But your financial calculator, as well as Excel spreadsheet, would be able to calculate it rather automatically. Using the numbers we had already, you see here that the calculator provides us with an answer of 12.26. So that would mean, given our cost of capital being is 10%, the project. The profitability index tells us how many present value cash dollars do we receive for every present value dollar invested. So. It's similar to net present value, but the net present value adds everything together. And if, they, if it's greater than zero, that means the amount of dollars we get in is greater than dollars out. The profitability index um, is, provides us with the additional piece of information of per unit dollar that goes out, how many dollars do we get in? So it is a measure of efficiency of the dollars. Now the criterion would be, of course, that we would need to get more than $1 um, in for every dollar going out and we would accept a project for which has a greater greater than one dollar in for every dollar out since profitability index is normally used when we have a certain a limited amount of funds where so we would be able to rank things we would normally also choose the project which is giving us the highest profitability index uh, greater than one of course as a calculation, it's PV of cash inflows over PV of cash outflows. The outflows usually cash flow zero, the initial cash flow. Now, if we look at our previous example, 
and I was mentioning this when we had the NPV, uh, the net present value was 5,963. And given that our initial cash outflow was 100,000, that means that the total number of cash inflows, which would be the numerator for the profitability index here, would have to be 5,963 plus the 100,000. So in other words, that is 105,936. So you can look at the profitability index as being equal to the net present value plus the present value of the cash outflows, which is the 100,000 here, divided by that present value of the cash outflows. So our result is 1.059, which means for every dollar that we invest, we're receiving $1.059 back in present value terms. So the advantages for internal rate of return are that it is intuitive and easy to understand. It just means the return on our project or on our investment. It does consider the time value of money and it is almost always applicable for every type of project. We'll see some cases where we have some issues with that. The net present value is always applicable and quite useful. The profitability index is useful and it considers the effectiveness in those cases where we are tight on our investment money so we need to ration it and then we want to be most efficient and look for the most profitable projects. The disadvantages for both IRR and profitability index is that they'll give preference to smaller projects which give us higher returns. Um, in cases where we may reject projects which give us higher um, or rather more pre present value dollars. We're going to look in that at the next uh, presentation, which is part three. The internal rate of return and to a smaller extent uh, profitability index also have troubles with atypical cash flow patterns. I hope that helped.